Hood Nation, what's going on, bros and bros? Look, man, this is with Junior. I trust all as well. Check that out, Will Nation. This is the Dino Wide Glide 14. Let's see, what's the mileage on it? There's no. No, that can't be right. That cannot be right. 7,000 miles on the 14? What? <laughs> Check that out, bro. Now that is cool, man. A grenade? Hey, what y'all think, Wood Nation, man? For real, though. Should I, should I go ahead and should I go ahead and get it? 2014 Dana. Alright. Do I look cool though, man? Yeah. All right, be honest, do I look like a 1% or 99? You are going to look like a 99. <laughs> Alright Van, alright, I'm glad I ran into you. Are we doing the New Year ride? It's your ride. <laughs> alright. Plan on being here New Year's, I hope you <laughs> Alright, we're doing the New Year ride, y'all. We are doing the New Year ride. 12 o'clock? Yes. 12 o'clock noon. Kickstands up 12 o'clock noon here at Savannah Harley Davidson. We'll talk more about it, but I just ran into him. <laughs> All right, y'all. So my guy Van is headed out to uh, Daytona. So I'm going to hop on the highway with the man and just ride with him a piece of the way. Let's rock it, man. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Oh my god, Van Bike Wood Nation. Man. Man, this dude hit the throttle on me, man. I was like, oh man. I got the mustard. I just didn't get the ketchup. I had to catch up. <laughs> Check it out, bro. Man, this is a beauty, man. Check it out, y'all. Check it out, so the passenger won't scratch up the bags. Got the music. No, oh, man, look at all this chrome. You got a nice bike, bro. Man, you got a nice bike. How many miles you got on here, man? 35 something. What? Oh, 35, oh man, I gotta catch up to you. Hold on, let me see where I'm at. I gotta catch up the van, y'all. Where I'm at, y'all. Uh-oh, I'm at 32, man. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> what year is that, man? 18. 18. Look at that, man. Looking like a 2021. Hello, man. We was doing suicide, bro. We was riding side by side. Oh, man. Just, man, ain't nothing like good riding, yo. Tagged the other day. Oh, did you? What you, what you got? Ace. Aces and eight. Oh, aces like, and eight. Playing cards. Oh, that's cool, man. Field, dead man's hand. What? Man, I I never knew how to play cards. My guy uh, finessed the challenge and Big seen. Rob showed me. Oh, you saw that? <laughs> man, I, I just learned and I kind of forgot some stuff already. Yeah. Gosh, this looks good, man. I played spades way back when I was in the military, but I don't know how to, I couldn't tell you the first thing. In oh, yeah? Man, thank you for serving our country, man. Thank you for your service. Oh, man. Man, we get it, man. Now, what? Why the tassels, up, man? Just, Ooh, wait. 
Okay, because like yeah. we was riding, it was like this. They're, they're <laughs> supposed to be when you're riding, and if you're getting sleepy, they they hit your. Oh hands. really? But oh, that's cool. I just like. I didn't know that. We making ground. You ready to hit it? <laughs> Nation bros and bro so man I gotta give my guy Big Rob a two thumbs up man for uh helping me and the fellas on to uh crunch fitness. I'm gonna go up in here man and, and get go ahead and get my joint on man but I gotta use the other door. Man, because I gotta say the little time that you know what I'm saying I was here as a guest, man, these guys been nothing but nice, man. So let's let's do this. You know which membership Uh I don't know, I'm just gonna pay for the year. So the year? yeah. Hey y'all, I'm, I'm FaceTime and Robert Simmons. We do have an app. Oh, you did pick up. Huh? We have an app you can connect that to. You do? What's up, Rob? <laughs> What's up, man? Hey, this this is Robert Simmons right here. That's him. <laughs> What's up, man? Hey, I made sure you got your credit. I'm, I'm drawing it for the year at the gym. <laughs> I'm at the gym. <laughs> hey, I made sure she got you your credit, too, so you get like a month free, bro. Yep. Yeah, you gonna tell him he get a month free? Got your month free. <laughs> <laughs> I would nation. All right, bros and bros, man. Thanks to my guy, Big Rob, man. I am a member of Crunch Fitness. Cause man, I mean, I have been wanting to join the gym, man, but I I love all the amenities, man. And I mean, I'm like Big Rob, I'm kind of spoiled. But anywho, man, y'all check out this bonus footage coming at you guys. Blessings, man. I'll see y'all at church tomorrow. Wood Nation, bros and bros, what's going on, man? Look, this is Wood Junior, man. I trust all as well. Where you at, wifey? Ooh. One of Wood Nation. <laughs> That's wifey. Got it? Yeah. There you go. Thank you, mom. You got you know it, bro. Need... Oh, yeah. I don't think I need my jacket. No, I think, nice. you know what? Let me put mine. My... You can put yours yeah, in here? Yeah, I do that. And then. Yeah, we're taking our jackets off, y'all. It was cold on that bike, though, man. Oh. Morning again, Wood Nation. So, hubby and I are volunteering for the great thanksgiving at old savannah city mission watch the um, band though oh thank you bro. it's an annual event held in savannah uh where um the homeless um, families and individuals can come and they're served a meal or two and have a time of fellowship and they also get to know um, the volunteers and specifically the services offered at the shelter so we um, participate every year, but of course with COVID, they put a hold to that for a few years. So we are excited that we can participate again. Ow. And uh, traditionally, many years ago, they would um, hold this event outside under a tent. Um, mm -hmm. But um, when we've been serving um, for several years, they've had it indoors. So we're excited about being able to be a part of the traditional way of being under the tent. So we're looking forward yeah. to it and we're glad that y'all can share the experience with us. That's right. Happy to be here, happy to serve. Let's get it, Wood Nation. This is Jermaine Murray, Program Director at Old Savannah City Mission. Um, we're doing a big, great day of Thanksgiving today where we're serving, serving everybody and anybody in the community that wants to come out, enjoy some music, just sit and relax and have a good time. Um, it'll be going on the day from 11 to 3 o'clock, so we're very happy to be fortunate enough to have somebody out here to broadcast and advertise it and just let the community know what Old Savannah City Mission is doing here. Actually, that's a great place to start because uh, women are marginalized in homelessness. Mm -hmm. So, if you're in a given mood, we need about four million. We're gonna do a women's shelter in close proximity. That's one of the hardest groups to house. Um, you're standing in the common area, mm -hmm. 
This is where they come in if they get seven days in after they do intake and they're 42 beds in. The seven days is contingent upon, of course, behavior and protocol, but then also if you make a move to do better. For instance, if you get a job, um, if you start counseling somewhere, you can bring proof of these things back and get an extension given by the little guy you saw down there with the glasses, Jermaine Ray. He's the director of the building and the program. <coughs> um, generally, the people who stay here end up either heading further in or out. Um, the guy behind you is the founder of the mission, Pastor Larry McDaniel. In 1997, he and Reverend Jim Lewis uh, gave birth to this vision. Now, Reverend Jim Lewis had formerly been at the largest mission in the world at that time in L.A., and they got together and had a conversation which turns out to be destiny. Mm -hmm. Then this place was founded. When this place was initially founded, a church designation was not authorized. So there's a thousand ways to skin a cat. They did a mission. Mm -hmm. And then they had some grocers who were on board, and um, they said, hey, we'll feed them. And ergo, we started getting donations in and then having people receive the natural food before they get soul food, the word of God. Um, I never knew that there were levels to homelessness. How many of you knew that? No. Sad, isn't it? That the general public is usually misinformed about it. We figure everybody who's homeless is on the corner or dysfunctional. Why don't they just get a gig? What's going on with them? And there are entire families in homelessness. We've had people come in here bring children. We've had people who have full-time jobs at Kroger and other places. We had one time a, a guy from Gulfstream, left out of here from getting fed, got in his car, and I remember I had preached that night being amazed to see the spectrum of homelessness. It's really what we think it is. Um, mental illness is a huge problem in homelessness. Mm -hmm. Why don't they just get a job? Well, if you're untreated schizophrenic, it's hard to hold anything. So there are behavioral health opportunities that J.C. Lewis offers, that uh, Gateway offers. And a lot of people don't know this, so when they go by, they just put money in the cup. But lots of times, money is the least of their problems. And there's some stability issues that are going on. So in this particular edifice, we house three levels of homelessness. The first <coughs> is the people that come off the street that simply want to qualify for a seven day bed. They go through the proper protocols, they do intake from four to 615. If they successfully navigate intake, then they're given a bed. So somebody here is saying, well, if they're homeless, that should be enough to qualify you. <coughs> well, in actuality, it isn't because we don't have the capability clinically to house certain people. And so if you get them in here and they have a psychotic break and they start spreading feces on the wall and running around naked and fighting, we're not equipped to, that, to handle that. All we can do is the cops. So <clears throat> it's important at intake that we establish, are you on any meds? Ritalin, Prozac, Adderall, Lithium. Are you currently taking them? Who prescribed them? Gateway comes here once a month, across the street with J.C. Lewis and the mobile unit. J.C. Lewis is here every Monday downstairs in that office you saw next to the two bathrooms. <coughs> And when they come here, they're happy to see anybody. We have indigent forms that we fill out called homeless referrals, so nobody has a copay. And you can be seen. You would be surprised at the number of veterans that are in homelessness. As a matter of fact, in our current program, we have 13 people, and I know at least three of them are veterans. So there's a lot of mitigating circumstances, and homelessness is complicated. That's the first tier. The second tier, is someone who's gotten out of their incarceration newly and they've had an addiction. And they're looking for an opportunity to not only revamp their lives, but have rehab. Now, we're a Christian mission, so the nexus for everything we do is the word of God. So they get classes here, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from seven to eight and then from eight to nine, from a litany of volunteers, some lay, some elders, some bishops, retired master sergeants, tech sergeants, to not only help them put their lives back together and become unaddicted, 
but to acclimate them successfully back into society. The first half of the program is 13 months long. The first 30 days, <clears throat> they are what we call an applicant, right? It's a probationary period to see if they're a good fit for us and we're a good fit for them. Now, probably I've been here almost two years, December will be two years. 80% of the time it works. Sometime it doesn't. Reverend Jim Lewis, Pastor Larry McDaniel coined a phrase and it's still true. You have to be mature in your misery. Change is a choice. Change is a choice. Mm -hmm. And so many people say, well, you know, Everybody should just be put in here. No, everybody doesn't want to be here. You have to understand that in homelessness, some people have had certain experiences that were traumatic within edifices, like women being raped or assaulted, and they don't particularly care for being inside. So to that particular section of the population, we have to also cater so when the donations are picked up by the kitchen supervisor, Greg Young, food is put outside as well. Mm -hmm. So to the untrained eye, you walk by, you say, well, you guys didn't feed them and they were standing outside. Well, contrary to popular belief, there was a table full of stuff. So generally, we try to have a balanced hand and be led by the spirit. That's the second tier. The third tier is what we call affordable housing. Affordable housing is people getting from their knees to their feet. They are people who have successfully navigated the labyrinth of homelessness, gotten jobs, bought a letter head back, and are now staying here for a third of what they make, which is a fraction of what they would try to pay in the historic district if they tried to get a place. Those people are able to save money to, um, to mature and learn life skills, why they have a roof over their head, and some degree of independence while they're still here. Now, we have some that are long-term, like we got a, a beloved brother named Sammy. Sammy's been with us six years, um, but he's doing well. He saved a bunch of money. He's been drug free. He's serving the Lord. Um, different strokes for different folks. There's no one size fits all in homelessness. There just isn't. And then some people don't have any family. You would be surprised where people come from and end up here in Savannah. Miami, Denver, Puerto Rico. I, I, it never ceases to amaze me as the chaplain and case manager when I ask them where they're from and they tell me. Um, that third tier usually leaves here and goes on to lead productive lives. They usually end up with their own place and, and some will come back and volunteer. Um, most of the people that you encounter on staff today are successful graduates of the program. The director, Jermaine, graduated four years ago and by the grace of God and obedience worked his way up to being the building director and the program director. Greg Young in the kitchen, been with us eight years. Greg successfully navigated the program on his third try. So it doesn't stick for everybody the same amount of time. So we try to practice grace and let God do the judging. However, the house has rules, violence, threat of violence, drugs on the compound, um, those are no-goes. And unfortunately, some people don't make it, but just because we can't help them doesn't mean they don't need help. So what we try to do is bring to bear the litany of resources that we have. We have a sheet downstairs that we give you. We pray you out. There's the Salvation Army, there's the Union Mission, there's the Hope House. There are a litany of other organizations that are equally qualified to help you. And in some cases, you have to go through the gauntlet to get to God. You'll be in a program and not quite finish it. You'll be in this one and you did it, but then you didn't stay clean again. So things happen, but we try to network and make sure that we don't just send people out the door with no resources. Um, we serve lunch. It's hard to tell this time of year because of the holidays, it fluctuates. Um, and, and homelessness is not hopelessness. A lot of them get financial aid because they're disabled veterans or they're on Social Security and SSI. Their addiction is just greater than their need to balance their books. So um, like any other organization, the first and the 15th, we may not feed as many people. But mid-month, the numbers can run 68 to 80 at every meal. We do, um, we do lunch, there's always the word of God and then there's eating. We do lunch and we do dinner. Now breakfast in the morning is reserved for the people that spent the night in the building. Uh, we have currently 13 students and they get up about five o'clock and they begin. And they do everything from clean to make sure that the friends and neighbors get their showers and their clean clothes and then they come downstairs uh, Joe and Greg 
will generally fix a breakfast, and then once they get the breakfast, we allow them to leave the edifice so we can clean it and get ready for the next wave. Generally, if the weather's not inclement, they'll be back in about 11.30, and then they'll stay until lunch is served again and go back out about one. Now, actually that serves another purpose too though, you know, um, some things if they sit still will grow roots. So we didn't want this to be a flop house. People need sometimes to be incentivized to change. So knowing that you can't just get up and walk around in your flip flops and drink coffee and watch cable kind of makes you think I better plan my next move. Mm -hmm. So that is our sincere and genuine hope. And in, in a lot of cases, that is what happens. Um, the students who stay here don't stay on this side. They have rooms, they have a laundry room, they have a weight room, they have a flat screen, they have a training area for the Urban Institute and all that's down the hall. If you go out this door and make a right, um, we'll go into the next open bay area. take something else interesting. Uh, I served there 16 years and then hung around so long they hired me. <laughs> but in that 18 years, I was amazed at the level of goods that God provides for his children. The donations we get, I have seen students better dressed than I. And I was amazed to see it because it changed my limited perception of homelessness from believing they had to be tattered to be broken. Because some of us are fixed up on the outside, but on the inside, there's a store. And when I started seeing these students, and, and um, it's really kind of humorous, but the other thing that happens is the average person that's a student here gets chunky. They pick up weight. Because in a lot of cases, when they're happy, they're heavy. They're eating right for the first time. They're eating as much as they want with no portion control. And it's just amazing to see them go from hoarding food to sharing food. So we thank God for the metamorphosis that happens. Um, the, the clothes that are up there lots of times are given us by donors. We are 501c3. We couldn't do it without donations. Uh, Pastor Lad, of course, is well connected in the community having been a sanctuary pastor who retired and pillar in the community for a long time, but we are constantly amazed by the landings, Dutch Island, Skidway Island, the quality as well as the quantity of donations that we get, and we are so grateful. This room was remodeled by Compassion Henderson Campus. They paid for the chairs, the tables, and I believe most of the setup was, at that time, Pastor Jason was with them and Pastor Cliff had taken over. Um, that's a pool table. Uh, weights, treadmill. Uh, if you ain't careful, they'll be in better shape than you. It's available. And when you first bring them upstairs, in a lot of cases, just to see the look in their eye, because just like a lot of us, a lot of them have a misconception about what's available once you become an indigent person. This is where the Urban Training Institute happens. We're missing some of the tables, because we use them for Thanksgiving functions, but generally they'll be set up in a horseshoe and the teacher would be in the center. Um, and the teaching happens in uh, increments of one hour. And usually it's, it's two classes in the morning and then they start their day. Um, you're standing in front of rooms that the students actually stay in. Most of them have, excuse me, two beds in them. Uh, they're two man rooms. I think we got one or two that are so small they're one man rooms, but they're fully furnished. They have quilts and pillows and uh, whatnots, as we call them. Uh, so this is what we call um, the common area, right? And then if you go around the other side, you can peek around there and see a, a, a laundry room. Hey, Donald, you keep walking through here, so I have to say your name now. That's right. This is Donald. He's a 10-year Navy veteran craziest hours as he does it but um, to me it is amazing to see when they come in how they get served and then once they begin the metamorphosis how they begin to serve and so you see them begin to help change lives just like somebody helped them change theirs and that's phenomenal all of these are student rooms um, 
And we say 13 months, but the truth is that some people stay longer. Um, some get hired out of the program and end up working here. Galen was hired after he successfully finished. Uh, Jermaine was, if you go to the store on Mills B Lane, 52nd Street, it's as big as a small Walmart. That's Jimmy Dawson. He graduated the program 10 years ago and he runs that store completely. So I don't know about you all, but I believe we have to see to be. So we have a lot of testimonies, powerful testimonies of people who have successfully navigated the system and made it out and made it work. And these are the best people to be hired here because they're walking testimonies that it can be done. When someone says it can't, we simply say, but it can. And there's a litany of people who have gone on leadership positions that have left humble beginnings. So um, this area here also has a laundry room and a, um, there are urinals in there and there are showers and commode stalls. So each side kind of has its own amenities, which I found amazing. If you would have told me that existed in homelessness, I would have argued with you. This is the last part of the, of the, um, the renovation and the most extensive, so excuse us. But generally, they would line up and we call them decent men and order with the women, the infirmed children first, and then we do over 65, and then we do row by row. Um, and they generally would come in, line up here, and there would, there would have been a window there. And at that window, they can get their plate, and then come around and get their drink, and then they sit down. Take all the volunteers in here. Yeah, open up with prayer. We good. If we get all the volunteers, everybody. Oh, you're more than welcome. I think so. Thank Last you. Last month, they were in the day. We served last month, but now this one's different. Wow, thank you, man. Yeah, blessings on you. Yes, sir. Wow, I'm glad to be here. Today, God, we want to glorify you in deed as yes. well as in birth. Help us, oh God, to humble ourselves and to have the direction and protection of the Holy Ghost in this place, yes. oh God. Bless us despite us. Use us in spite of us to represent as excellent emissaries of the kingdom of God in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.